Now, you see, I can't just leave it there, can I? So the Ferrari is better. We've got to find out now which is the fastest round the track. Now that means we've got to bring out a good friend of mine. Some say he thinks crisps are animals. And that if he could be bothered, he could crack the Da Vinci goal in 43 seconds. All we know is, he's got the stick. Now normally what I do at this point is move my hand towards the camera. Yeah, I wasn't expecting that. Oh, he's first in the Mercedes, what a surprise. Uh, traction control very off of course and with the more grippy tyres and what's he listening to in there? Oh god he seems to start, start listening to his own nonsense he's looking very neat through there well, where are the horses for the stick there? As he powers through the last corner with a more smoke. Where are the all the horses from the stick there? The Mercedes crossed the line in just over a minute. And now, let's find out the time for that beast over there. The Ferrari. Okay, and now I'm going to stand in front of the camera so you can't see the Ferrari's time and it still will be a bit of a surprise. You don't see it, right? I hope so. Yeah, here he comes in the Ferrari, the roof open, that's unusual for the state. Is he still listening to that stupid audio nonsense? Yeah, some say that his scrotum has its own small gravity for it. And because it... Weird sticky today. Well, and of course, he is this thing, and look at how neat the Ferrari goes from there. The Mercedes was all over his mode. <laughs> Listen to that. Ferrari did it in three seconds quicker than the Mercedes. Now you see, that's very, very good indeed. But there are more than just those two convertibles with hard tops. You see, there is something called a Daihatsu Copa. This is it, and it has a folding metal roof, so it's time for me to go out on Suzuka East Corps to find out if it's better than the Ferrari or the Mercedes. Okay. They say that slower cars are more with less grippy, but more realistic with less grippy tyres. That will be N1, I think. Now... I have to be honest. 
I'm not convinced that this steals my heart. Look at that kilometer counter. It only goes up to 140. That's not even 100 miles an hour. Okay, come on, steering. Slide. Uh, I've got to heat the tyres a bit, of course, to get them up for maximum levels of grip. Now turn the ASM on. How brave is that? This thing is so slow. Okay, stop it. Okay. What has happened there is that I've tested an awful car. It's so stupid and so hideously stupid and dull. You might think that all cheap cars are rubbish, but I don't think that's true. You see, I'd rather like this little Suzuki Cappuccino. I mean, it's very cheap. That's only 63 horsepower, but then it only weighs 690 kilograms. It's a very, very good little car. It's very nimble and agile. But 63 horsepower is very little. However, what I've got here is a Suzuki Cappuccino tune version. And it's been pumped up so it produces a hundred brake horsepower. Go. This is a racing car, so it has more grip. So you see, what I'm trying to do here is explain to you the Suzuki Cantino is good, but this is one better. Now let's tweak the engine. It is so much more fun. Even more fun because it's just faster. You know, I actually come by or rent one of the normal Suzuki Cappuccinos quite often and it's really, really good looking. Really a funky little car. And it's so small. Even Richard Hammond would have problems fitting in it. Oh god. It's a funky little car this. I mean it's so easy to play with. It wants to play. And it lets you play. Because it's so easy and so underpowered. I'm not going to just suggest that this is better than the Ferrari or the Mercedes, but it is a fun little car. You mustn't underestimate this Suzuki, because I rather like it. You see, in the good of the better and the hopeless, I don't want to feature only hugely powerful cars. 
this is the first one. 